Tonight, five days detainment in the land of Pai. Not apple or plum pie, but Pai as town in Northern Thailand. Each year, backpackers flock here to transfer the small town into their data files. Guest houses, trekking agencies and restaurants are everywhere in downtown. And the night bus with live music and partying. Together, we will explore the local food, various walks, a massive Buddha, bamboo bridge and Pai Canyon. This is Travel Travels, Travels Without Mercy. Welcome to Pai. 3 hours 35 minute bus ride and then 30 minute walk to the hostel where we spy to be on the other rim of the mountain valley. We made it to Pai. Veronica was asleep for most of it. I tried to stay awake, but I couldn't actually sleep because there's so many twists and turns. It's one of the craziest roads I've been on. I don't know how you slept. I don't think you had a choice, did you? You just passed out. Pai, once a quiet market village, became the new Thailand getaway. With its tiny population of 2,284, it offers an airport with several daily flights, nine 7 11 over 350 accommodation properties, several live music clubs, beer bars, and three sets of traffic lights. It has numerous trekking roads and a bamboo bridge, five waterfalls, five hot springs, recently created land split. And after Pai was featured in two popular Thai-made romantic movies, it became a popular holiday destination for Thai tourists as well. But yeah, so those three hours went really, really quick. We're staying out in a slightly quieter part of the town, but it's still, it's still pretty touristy around here. With the overhelmic choice where to rest our heads, we decided to book Carrot on the Moon, a great private hostel with one private room. The breakfast included, we managed to stumble upon a mind-blowing deal, £16 per night. Being a bakery and cafe as well, we spoiled ourselves to numerous cakes and coffees. With the high sugar rush, we have decided to take our decaying arteries for a walk. A 30 minute trek in 30 degrees into the mountains and 350 steps to see the Buddha, Pratra Mayen, should do it nicely. It's about half an hour walk, no need for a scooter or anything for this. Even today, like middle of the day, it's still oh, not that hot. Yeah, it's a fairly pleasant walk along the road. Just have to avoid the scooters as usual as everywhere in Asia. Just been, I think they've all been cut away because it's now the dry season, so in the wet season all the leaves would be flooded. When you go, don't forget this is a Buddhist temple, so cover your naked shoulders and legs. And I do have a t-shirt in my bag for covering my shoulders, make, making sure I'm modest for going up to the, the Buddhist statue as well, the temple. No worries. Despite the perfect time to appreciate the scenery is during the down and the sunset, we decided to go in the morning, straight after our sugary breakfast. We just made it to the base of the temple now, so I just changed quickly into my t-shirt. It looks pretty steep as you get to the top, so... There's some people cheating using a scooter. Which will probably be us next time, if it's that hard. <laughs> it's 500 meters from this point and then just in the distance there is the start of the 350 steps. You can rent this whole house. Can you? Can you? Oh yeah, pretty cool. Ready to get the, up the steps now. My ears are getting blocked. Huh? My ears are getting blocked. What? Oh, fuck's sake. It starts off easy and then it's a little bit steeper as you go up. And then the last 100 steps or so, I guess really steep. But yeah, it looks like there's even more steps. I think this might be the 350 steps. I think I might have been wrong about this. <laughs> the 
the sun is here and right out there, and then there's no wind either, so it's From up here, that is the entire little town of Pai. You can just see how small it is, but it's had massive expansion in the last few years. And then in the evening at the Pai Night Market, it's basically a long, little one long road. As you can see, it's not a very big place, but in the evening, it's sort of a concentrated level of just tourists and the tourist food. Yeah. Didn't expect it to be that busy along one road, but I guess that's where everyone goes in the evening. So it makes the rest of the little town very, very quiet, which is nice for us. We can get off and enjoy the peace and quiet while everyone enjoys their cheesy chips and burger. Yeah, I'm just gonna take in the view now. <laughs> Try to stop sweating. After an exasperating walk, we decided to bounce our energy up in a Buddhist vegetarian restaurant. This place serves different Thai curry and the northern Thai famous dish, Kai Soy. <laughs> Open 11 to 7. Oh, you're at the lake. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Very peaceful right now. What's your order? Uh, we ordered one cow soy, and then you ask for a plate of rice, and you can choose different curries that you'd like. So just sort of, I'm not sure exactly what they are, but you, they all look really good, so we used to just, just try one of each. It's a really rich cow soy sauce. Because of the cold as well, it's perfect for a day like today. You're still sweating from, from the water. Sometimes it's always really wrong. What's next? This restaurant is also a temple, and you need to take your shoes off before you enter. In part one, we arrived in Pai, got a hostel, went to see Buddha and ate some food. Tonight, we are going for a whole day walk to see the Bamboo Bridge, Pai Canyon, a waterfall, land split and alongside we will eat with some chickens, see some cows and speak to some people. Welcome to Pai! This morning we woke up super early, we even skipped our tasty breakfast to fit everything into one day. At the start of the walk, we met a new friend named Jono, who kept us company and guided us from the surrounding danger. He's walked off there. Now he's waiting again. I think he's trying to take us in there. <laughs> I don't know what he's expecting. I'm not sure. We're walking from a long way today, then. Taking him for a walk. <laughs> he's coming with us. Rush out. What time is it? Mm. Uh, five to nine. Ah, uh, he disappeared. After about an hour, we came to the first attraction. Just to the, uh, the, the land, land split. split now. This is the start of the land split, just over here. Hmm. That's a pretty deep split there. In 2008, an earthquake caused a land to split to 2 meters wide and 11 meters deep. I think there's more this way. Mm. Under helm of the natural disaster looking from the top, he decided to climb down over the mountains of spiders and dive deep into the split. So we're sitting from the top and now we're going to walk down around the corner and you can walk through it. So. Feeling like proper explorers by going through the cracks back and forwards, but not getting lost, we will try to find our way out. Avoiding the spiders, yes. Maybe it's there, it goes around there. Wanna try? Are we going that way then? When we got out, there was a farmer's wife offering us some hibiscus tea and other refreshments. We tried it all and bought a bag of a hibiscus tea and left a generous donation. That's the hibiscus, the hibiscus juice, just the juice of the hibiscus. It's nice. Oh, pumpkin. Oil, yeah. Sorry, pumpkin. 
I saw these growing in the around when we were in the split. So apparently that is uh, the hibiscus flower. That's what, how you make the tea there, because hibiscus tea that is the flower. It's grown in those gardens. Uh, so you can buy the dried flowers for the tea. Ah, uh, fifty baht. Hot water. Five minutes, ten minutes. Yeah, a little bit too much. Hello, cow. I name you Molly. Cow Molly. Hello, Molly. We decided the time is precious, so we swiftly moved to a different high location, a waterfall. The Palm Bok Waterfall. We're pretty much at the top now. That makes nice how to see. Decent walk. Uh -huh. Yeah. Food. Food. We now made it the full two and a half hour walk up to the bamboo bridge. Um, it's really nice and peaceful up here, but as we were expecting, because it's the dry season, it's not as green and lush as you see in all the pictures, but still, like I said, really peaceful, really pleasant. Probably the best part around essentially is the people up here, they're all very welcoming and happy to see you up here. Uh, yeah, they, they're very proud of, of the, the bridge. So the bridge is basically connects um, the village to the temple. Um, so depending on where you read, it's between 500 and 800 meters long. Um, but in the wet season, because the rice field to be so high, uh, the bridge basically takes them across up to the temple. Um, yeah, it was built by the local people and yeah, they're happy happy to show you the bridge uh, next to the entrance and there's another restaurant a community restaurant just down the road as well um, we decided to eat in here because we for the price and you still got the view of the bridge behind you so and there's some, lots of little chickens and everything the food's really really good here as well so, i mean the the walk here really wasn't that bad at all because uh, it was two and a half hours in total you can't take a scooter it'll take 25 minutes but we have plenty of time to do the to do the walk, so we would recommend it if you're fit enough to do it. As the sun was starting to set down, we decided to move to another location, the Pai Canyon. Completely exhausted, we didn't care about the big crowds, but there was no reason then yet. So we sat down long day. and watched the sunset over the Great Pai Canyon. Today in Pai, in the north of Thailand, we're going to explore the Yunlai viewpoint. We're gonna go through the Chinese village and eat in a local restaurant. This is Devereaux Travels. Welcome to Pi, part 3. <laughs> um, so we walked up to Yinglan uh, viewpoint just outside of Pai. Uh, it's, it's usually, well no it is, it's better for sunrise. But seeing as the time of year we're in now, it's very misty in the morning. There's a lot of fog in the morning so we tried to see what it's like the sunset. Um, it's sort of 360 degree view from the viewing platform up here. 
and yeah, it's amazing views. You can see all of Pai and the whole mountain range around us. Um, the sun will set probably about an hour and a half from now, so we may or may not stay for that because it's just going to disappear down behind the mountains and then, yeah, we won't get to see much, but behind us is a much better view to summarize, so we'll show you guys that another time. Um, but yes, it's, like I said, it's a fantastic view from up here. Um, you can see all, so we, we walked it about an hour and a half from the center of Pi, but pretty much everyone takes a scooter or a taxi as part of a tour to come up here. But it wasn't much of an effort to come up here, really, once you're oh, up steep. here. Hmm? So steep. It's a very steep hill. <laughs> Probably about 20%. Like at that. least come on in five, I think. Five. Yeah, the last little bit. Pretty steep, but it's nothing. Um, it's not that hard, really, because um, once you're up here, you can spend a couple of hours up here. So there's the there's a cafe up here, which will charge you twenty baht each to get to sort of get into this little green area here. But it's not a lot. You can't you can't expect it to, everything to be free. But um, yeah, some people are a bit angry by having to pay, but. 20 baht is... And you get a ticket. Yeah, you get a proper ticket, so it's not like they're trying to scam you or anything. Um, yeah, it's another popular destination for the tourists here, and yeah, you can see why. It's a lot of, a lot of views, so you have to walk through the little sort of Chinese village, which sort of mixed reviews on that. A lot of people probably find that it's a bit of a tourist hotspot, so sort of trying to get as much money out of tourists as possible. Um, but I think it's just there's a small Chinese community just outside of Pai and they've just sort of um, built on that basically just to sort of profit from it, which I can't blame them for. It's pretty much purpose built for tourism. Mm -hmm. Obviously there will be a Chinese community who live here, but expanded on it for profit. We just sort of walk straight through it just to try and get straight here. But yeah, it's a nice, pleasant evening. We've run out of water, but yeah, <laughs> we still enjoy it. It's very peaceful.
Today's one came with uh, a, like a blue crab, a small blue crab, but we, we didn't ask for that today. Just sort of have to scoop this in because it's long news. Mm. The lime is, adds an extra flavour, but with, with the meat version, it definitely takes it to another level. It's a lot, lot nicer. Thank you. 